Now, the Met Office has extended the amber weather warning for high winds to cover the majority of the UK. Storm Isha will bring gusts of up to 80 miles an hour, which could damage buildings and disrupt travel plans. Joining me now is uh, Jerry Dyer, founder and presenter on Big Jet TV, who's in Heathrow. Now, I would imagine, Jerry, if you're flying out in the next 24 hours, it's uh, quite a, a daunting prospect. Are we expecting that we're going to see dis some disruption at Heathrow then? Well, uh, winds are, um, at the moment, uh, stable and uh, controllable. I'm looking at the windsock right now. It's kind of sideways, but um, that's nothing new. But the winds have been gusting. Yeah and we're hearing anything up to 41 knots as it stands at the moment. So um, we're, uh, we're hoping to see, well, I say we're hoping to see just for our channel's sake, but uh, uh, not for these guys at Heathrow. Uh, we're looking at some possible disruption a little bit later on. Look, what a thing to attempt to land in this weather. Um, it must be equally intense, though, I would imagine, for those working in traffic control. Uh, I, I mean, do they have a challenge on their hands? Do they have to kind of rejig, retime how these uh, how these aeroplanes come in to, to land? Yeah, if um, if. Uh... If, if air traffic control um, have, if there are disruptions, then obviously uh, air traffic control have to deal with a whole, um, they have to deal with a whole different amount of uh, scenarios. Um, everything from when they are uh, overseas, when they're coming to the UK, if there is, um, if there are uh, high winds, if one aircraft is to go around, that can cause disruption throughout the whole um, industry, literally, uh, with diversions uh, and so on and so forth, because that aircraft obviously has to go back around and join um, the, 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 the other line of aircraft that are coming in as well. So if there's multiple go-arounds, you're dealing with aircraft that have to potentially divert um, and uh, that causes all sorts of disruption, both for Heathrow, for the, for the airport that they're coming into, but also uh, for other airports that they have to divert to as well. You sometimes get uh, aircraft that will leave here. Uh, they'll try twice because they get two attempts, um, mainly down to fuel, uh, and then they will uh, divert to wherever they are, are able to divert to, uh, sometimes as far down as uh, southern Europe if, they, if they're able to. Can Heathrow or UK airports really do anything to, to minimise disruption from a storm of this level? Uh, to be honest with you, not really. What Heathrow have been doing recently, if you have a look over uh, at the sheds over there, the maintenance sheds that we're, uh, that we're looking at there with Virgin Atlantic and British Airways, these big, giant sheds... Um, can cause a lot of wind um, disruption, uh, turbulent air that whips over the top of the sheds and creates uh, what we call the shed effect. And sometimes Heathrow uh, can divert the landings onto the southern runway. They switch the runways here uh, at London Heathrow uh, three o'clock every day. It's pretty standard procedure. Um, and then if, um, if the winds are too high, then they will obviously switch the landings to the southern runway uh, in order to make it a little bit less disruptive in terms of the winds. Uh, we can see one coming in here now, which is uh, sort of like going through that shed effect now, as we see. Um, but uh, like this guy, for instance, he's Swiss Air. There's a good chance that if that was to go around twice, he may have to either divert uh, to a UK airfield. But uh, because of the disruption that we've got in terms of winds at the moment, it's likely that they would uh, possibly have to go back uh, to Europe from where they started, which is uh, obviously massively disruptive uh, for the people that are on board the aircraft as well, of course. Is taking off just as uh, tricky in this weather as it is for, for landing for the pilots? Not really, no, no. Um, you know, once the aircraft is airborne, you may feel that the wind will, uh, will tip it ever so slightly. But in general, taking off is, uh, is a lot easier um, than, than, than landing in these conditions. And of course, it's all manual that they're doing here. There's a, a certain speed at which the aircraft can fly automatically with autopilot. But uh, generally, uh, this will all be uh, manual landings. Um, so, but, but taking off, 
Uh, it's a relatively straightforward procedure. Some of the eastern carriers are even flicking their autopilot around about 400 feet off the ground. So the aircraft literally flies uh, automatically from here uh, to wherever it might go to uh, very, very quickly. But um, auto and manual, there's two different things altogether. This is a British Airways 777 that's touching down now. These guys are very highly skilled, very qualified. Obviously, they have to train for these specific conditions as well. So, um, you know, you, you, you should feel very, very uh, confident as a passenger when flying with any airline from around the world. You clearly love what you do, Jerry. Um, it, it is just fascinating, though, to, to watch, isn't it, in this weather, the, the level of skill that is required to land these planes. Look at it wobble there. Oh, and I believe we've, yeah. we've lost Jerry, perhaps to be expected given the... Uh, the weather we had. Jerry, I was just going to quickly ask you, I, I think you're back with me now. You love what you do and it's, it's fascinating, isn't it, to see this? Oh, I think, I think we have lost Jerry again. But look, safe, safe landing there. But uh, yeah, wouldn't want to be uh, out in a plane in those 80 mile an hour winds. Great landing there. Now for a check on the weather. Warm memories wherever you go. The Weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. Storm Isha roars in today, bringing heavy rain and gale force winds. Northern Scotland is likely to see violent storm force winds overnight. Whilst conditions will become quieter tomorrow, there's a second storm system expected on Tuesday. This evening, an amber wind warning covers most of the country with winds expected to gust to 70 or 80 miles an hour. Travel disruption is likely as well as damage to property. There's an additional yellow rain warning with torrential downpours likely to cause flooding. Cloud, rain and strong winds over Ireland will spread into western Scotland and northwestern England by the middle of the day. Central and southern England, along with northeastern Scotland, will be mostly dry but increasingly windy. And it'll be milder than it has been recently with temperatures reaching double figures. By the evening, winds will become stronger still, though, as the warnings come into effect.